You're listening to the After The Show Movie Podcast brought to you by ascully.com. And here are your hosts, A. Scully and Sid Talk. You want to do some backwards talking, Sid Is Talk? it actually 20 seconds of silence? It seems like forever. 21 seconds. <laughs> oh my god. Backward talking was before the After The Show discussion today was us figuring out, even though I already knew, how David Lynch got the backwards talking in the red room. Red room. Room red, room dar, room dar. Room red would be murder. <laughs> Twin Peaks. We're talking about. Yeah, Twin Peaks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, it we was even it. recorded a little bit, and then we made it work, and it was yeah, kind of creepy it does and work. weird. Yeah. So if you like that backwards talking in Twin Peaks, just um, say the words you're saying backwards, and then <laughs> play them forwards. No. No. Yes. No. Say them forwards and then re- listen to them backwards. So then mimic that as best you can and then play that in reverse after you've recorded it. Did you get that? Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> That's our tutorial. <laughs> yes. All right. So it is Saturday, March the 17th. This is after the show. Are we also St. Patrick's Day for everyone out there it wearing is. green? I have my friend said, Are you wearing your green? I was like, Oh, probably not. And I forgot the pair of pants I wear almost every day have green right down the side. So I I'm actually covered. don't own anything that's green, so I'm wearing nothing green. You don't? I don't know. I don't have anything green. Well, I should have pinched you, but I didn't, so. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, if you're Irish. Not you're, anyway. And you're oh celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day and drink lots of Guinness. I don't think Irish people give a shit about St. Patrick's Day. I- Irish people do give a shit about St. Patrick's Day. Yes. Ireland is a party on St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. I thought that was one of those things we kind of twisted around and made it into a big it, deal. It's more of a big deal over here. That's what I'm saying. But it's still a deal there too. Hmm. You just said it was a huge deal. Like they party all day. Oh, there'll be parties on St. Patrick's Day. Hmm. So uh, this is after the show number 522. We are a movie review podcast, and this is a podcast about movies. <laughs> is that a contradiction? It's repetitive, but not unexpected. <laughs> this is uh, The movie we're looking at this week is Justice League. It's a 2017 movie released on Blu-ray this week, March the 13th. You can pick it up now. It's from our friends at Warner, and it's a PG-13 because it has superhero violence, apparently. So if, you don't, if you're not a fan of superhero violence, this is not the movie for you. So Sid Talk will give you the short synopsis of the movie Justice League. Hmm. Bunch of superheroes come together to defeat a foe that wants to destroy slash take over slash do something to our world. Come together. Oh, wait. That's not just this movie? <laughs> that's all superhero <laughs> movies, right? Come on, I don't need to tell people what Justice League is. Gee, many Christmas. Yes, it's Justice Sweet League. Christmas. All right. I'm oh, so, sorry, I'm crossing over into the other world. <laughs> so, having just seen Thor Ragnarok a couple of weeks ago, Marvel's latest superhero movie, we haven't seen anything from DC since Batman vs. Su- no, Wonder Woman would have been the last one. So, I saw the trailer for Justice League. I think you did too, right? Mm-hmm. Um... And how, let me go back here. We did review Batman vs. Superman, but did you like Batman vs. Superman? I can't remember. I think I, I don't know. I don't know if I thought it looked great. How um, how big of a fan of DC and Marvel movies is um, A. Scully? Big? Yes, big. How big on a scale? I don't know. Like Pretty 79% big, right? of all the liking that you could do? <laughs> yeah. like. Uh, do you like it as much as Twin Peaks? Yeah, I like that too. X-Files? I like that a lot. Yeah. Anyway, um, we saw the trailer for Justice League, and I thought it looked interesting because we get to see some new superheroes, and we get to see them all fighting together. And me, I'm a really big fan of Zack Snyder. Um, I love his movies, 300, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch being my favorite, actually. And Watchmen. I Would really you love. be in the minority of people when you say that I would you think like so, Zack yeah. Snyder? Uh, Man of Steel, I absolutely adore that one. That's, that is actually my favorite DC movie. So I, I was looking forward to this movie, and I would say, I will say, while I enjoyed it, I think it is a mess. It 
is very messy. Um, they don't really. These are my problems with it. Just off the just off the top of my head, after just coming out of seeing it. One, there's not much character development for anybody, including these new superheroes who we haven't met yet, like Aquaman and Cyborg and the Flash. We don't know them yet. Yet there's not much of anything. They, they turn up and then they're part of the team, right? There's no origin for them. Do you need an origin? Because well, they're going to make a movie for you at some point. So. I just felt like I didn't give a crap about Cyborg because <clears throat> I didn't really know much about him. Okay, Cyborg's my favorite. Mm. So right. we're different there. I don't disagree with you about it being a mess or the issue. there's going to be lots of issues that I would discuss. But um, I actually like Cyborg the best. So, like... The opening of this movie, which is classic Zack Snyder, I said to you, awesome song, yeah. really moving, slow motion images that he does. He did it in the beginning of Watchmen. He did it in the beginning of Sucker Punch. I like that when Zack Snyder does that, and I was it got me pumped for the movie. It was basically like people mourning for Superman in different ways and what was happening because Superman had died. Right there, you've marked my first and biggest complaint. This movie... The way the story is told does not show me that anybody gives a shit that Superman is dead. There is nothing. There's a little bit of crime. Yeah. And there's a little bit of that emotional overtone there at the beginning, but there's nothing. You're not showing me the world or the city. No one has shown me any little vignettes of how it's actually, or the decline, maybe from the time he dies to now, like the difference between the way something's happening. All it shows me is some dickheads in the street with the cops wrestling with them, somebody trying to rob a bank or whatever, or blow some shit up. Yeah. That's it. That does not tell me. The rest of the world's fine. There are snotty rich people walking down the street, and there's cars and trucks going, and the streets aren't a mess, and there's no big cloud of gloom. There's no, like, fires in the street. The buildings aren't collapsing, or whatever. Whatever the idea was supposed to be, if we're just supposed to be hopeless, then it needed to be a lot more hopeless. Like, that was my first thing. Like, the world doesn't really care. No. This world doesn't on. care. The only who cares? Batman. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He's like the only one who starts off caring. And then we don't see any citizenry at all being caring at all, except for mom and girlfriend. That's why I say it feels kind of messy, the movie. Yeah. It feels disjointed as well to me. Um, like there's a lot of there's a lot of repetition, like the same do you get what I mean? Like it's like Here's Batman doing this, and it, there's well, a lot I mean, of stuff. they're all like that. But I know this one in particular. There's a lot of stuff where I was like, "This is just like it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere." And then they introduce the bad guy, who, is, who sounds semi interesting to me. Um, did you not agree that you know when it explained the bad guy, and it's like here's these three boxes, and one's here with the humans, and one's here with the the Amazonians, and one's here with the fishmen. I was like, that sounds a bit like Lord of the Rings to me. Like, didn't they have like... Um, I don't think you're the only one. That's a pretty obvious thing to compare it to, to be honest. Yeah, but didn't it even... Didn't it just sound exactly like like you put this one here, you put this one here, put this one here, and then they'll not get together, and then everybody will be safe? Well, I'm sure the people who wrote the stories pulled from something. Well... <laughs> they wrote them in the 60s and the 70s, so... It's not out it of... It just felt really... I know, but it's really not out of like, the realm of possibility that the people who wrote that story originally were huge fans of Lord of the Rings, because the Lord of the Rings have been around since, what, the 40s, 50s? Before that? I don't know. Whenever Lord of the Rings was written. And it also, as a DC... And this is DC. It also felt a bit like the Infinity Stone thing again, like from Marvel's side. Um, and I mean, just, what else can you do? I don't to know. It just, it, it, it just came across as a more uninteresting version of Marvel's thing to me. And then when they introduced the buddy in a horrible CGI sequence where he's fighting against the Amazonians, it is really bad. Like it was bad. It was like a, I've seen video game cutscenes that look better than that. It, we it, watched Supergirl, and that's a TV show, and it looks better that. than that most of the time. I actually kept thinking. We've seen uh, in Supergirl the TV show. We see Flash, not this not this version of Flash, but actually Flash. He turns up sometimes, and his effect of running on the TV show is better than the one in this yeah. movie. Yeah, and I was like, why is that? Because that's just a that's a real 
you know, low, lowish budget TV show. And this is like a $300 million movie. Why can't you make it look all right? Because it doesn't look all right, does it? It looks... It seemed very unattended. Yeah, all the CG in this movie. I, there wasn't many moments where I was like, wow, that looks really cool. No, because it I squinted a lot. Yeah, I mean, it was... DC movies in, you know, in the past, I thought Batman vs. Superman had some dodgy CG. Wonder Woman also had some dodgy CG. It wasn't as bad, though. And in this one, when Wonder Woman does all, all her stuff, they made it look less like she was a, you know, a, a computer doll. But it made it feel really choppy because they kept chopping to a close-up of her and then having her fly around and not show her face while she's flying around. Yeah. So they tried to solve that idea of like in in Super in Wonder Woman when you watch her jumping around and you're like oh look, that looks like a CG Wonder Woman they tried to solve it but they made it kind of worse because it just felt really disjointed and weird so it's hard to follow the action when people are flying through the air and stuff because it's oh they're rubber men and now there's there's a real close up of his face so you can know it's him and. It just felt really weird and green screeny all the time. <laughs> and that baddie, what's the baddie called? Is the name of a band. <laughs> Steppenwolf. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, oh yeah, he's the name of a band. Um, well, the band was probably named after him. Correct. But Steppenwolf, <laughs> um, it, while he, on paper, when she started to explain him, I was like, oh, awesome. He's like Thanos. He's like a world ender kind of guy and he but loves then, it he digs it yeah but then when he turns up he's just a crappy cgi thing that you can't relate to at all because he's kind of jerky compared to everybody else he's he didn't seem very well animated and secondly he doesn't he has some fights with them i never feel like he's gonna end anything ever no. did you no you just felt like he was in a it's very small where they fought him like in, in a in a what was it like a Nuclear thing. Yeah. And it was a small area, again, so we can have a fight. And there's people, you know, there's lots of punching in. I guess what he needed was the power of these things. That would have pushed him over the edge. As he is, he's just like a Superman kind of guy where on Earth his strength and his, you know, knocking him around doesn't really hurt him much. Um, But then in the end... It didn't take much to bring him down. No, no. and it was, spoiler, but it was real uneventful, too. Yeah. Like, I, 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 it was not like other baddies going down, so no. give them credit for that. But No, but like when we watched Thor Ragnarok a couple of weeks ago, it was like a fun ride. I felt like it was real fun to watch. Yes, it was, you know, the end boss, let, let's say, calling it a video game, kind of, was very, you know, similar to what we'd seen before, but it just felt like a load of fun. This didn't feel like a load of fun to me. It just, it felt, it, its tone was like, they went, tried to go for this serious tone towards the beginning, but then when the Flash turned up, he started doing one-liners all yep. the time. Really annoying one-liners to me. But it would have worked in a different type of movie. It would. Because he was, it was, it was, it wasn't like obnoxious, but compared to the rest, it was obnoxious. That's it wasn't what I mean. alleviating anything. Yeah, like, like the Christopher Nolan Batman films, they took themselves very seriously the entire time. And that really worked. There wasn't anybody one-lining one anything. It was a very dark tone of a, of a Batman I mean, movie. Joker tried to say things funny, but it, he was like still, Bill Murray and Scrooge. He's just like, nobody gets me. Yeah, but it was still more <laughs> psychotic rather yeah. than silly. Like, But then when Flash turned up in this movie, it was almost like, well, Flash, you should actually be in Thor Ragnarok because them, them guys over there, that's your... <laughs> You know, you're on their humor level, and that's what they are, and they know they're that. But over here, in this dark and moody version of, uh, you know, Justice League, you don't seem in the, you don't seem right. Like it, you, you seem like you should go back to the TV show uh, Supergirl or whatever. So there was a lot of mess for me. It just felt like a mess. Like, it, and I all love- of that being said. You know, I know you love these movies. You have superhero stuff, and you love the DC world. All of that being said, I still really enjoyed it, even though I was blurring my eyes and kind of trying not to focus on the ragdoll effect and the CGI, which we should be totally over by now. Not that I'm a professional and I don't know how to do it, but you know, well, give me have- a, give me a few weeks up. I try to, I could assist on how to animate somebody's at least their nose or their eye or something to make it not look wrong. Oh, don't even get me started on the upper lip. We won't even discuss that. Well, no, let's discuss that. 
Um, <laughs> let, let me discuss what uh, before before we we're go talking into about it. distractions that keep you from enjoy keep me from enjoying a movie that's pure fantasy like this. But but be, Zack Snyder, were, you know, is the director of this movie. He's he's actually you know it says directed by Zack Snyder at the beginning. Um, he directed like two thirds of the movie, and then he had a a horrible incident happened in his personal life. And they brought Joss Whedon in to take over from Zack Snyder. And Joss Whedon wasn't happy with some of the tone of the movie, so he inserted new scenes, which they had to go and reshoot, that were all Joss Whedon stuff. And I was just looking into it, quite, and a lot of it is the Flash's silliness. Mm. He needed more brevity, he said, and this was too moody. So that's why it feels like a mess, I think, because there's two people in charge. One's got a certain idea, another's got a certain idea. And it kind of clashes and it feels weird. The other thing is, the movie was about three hours long when Zack Snyder was in charge of it. And the studio told Joss Sweden that it has to be less than two hours. So there's obviously an hour's worth of story removed somehow. Which I think would, <laughs> is what this movie is missing. It's that, it feels like there's a lot missing when you're watching it. It's like, oh, we're going from this to this that quick. And... So what happened was um, Henry Cavill, Superman, he's not dead, by the way. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's actually on was the cover. Was anybody fooled? He's actually on the cover of the movie. So, um, I mean, nobody's hiding the fact that he's in this movie. He was off, you know, Zack Snyder. He filmed a bunch of stuff. And then the, the um, production got, like, delayed uh, because of the Zack Snyder thing. He left. Production got put on hold for a month. And then they did. They called them back in for reshoots. Now, Henry Cavill had already gone off to make Mission Impossible, the new Mission Impossible film that's coming out this year. And in that movie, he has a moustache. And some kind of deal between Paramount and Warner Brothers, he could come back to do the reshoots, but he couldn't le- lose the moustache. He had to keep it. So this movie has Henry Cavill CG-removed moustache. Because as I pointed out, did they have a discussion at a table at some point or a Skype call where an executive on this side and an executive on this side said to each other, is it going to be more expensive for you to put a mustache on him or is it going to be more expensive for us to take it off of him? And somebody said, you're going to have to take it off because we're not going to have it. We're not going to have a fake mustache. And so, that was it. So what this what happens in the movie, how it manifests itself, this weird mustache situation is... There are many close... This is a super high-definition movie, obviously. It's new. There's many, many close-ups of Henry Cavill talking. I mean, they don't, like, try and hide it. They're right up in his face, but they put, like, Vaseline on his face. What did I say to you when it was over? I said, was, was Cavill a- all CGI? Yeah. Like, all the time? So they, what they do, they don't put Vaseline on his face. They put CG <laughs> Vaseline filter all over his face, and, and the mustache is digitally removed... So every time he's talking, it looks odd to me. Like Not every time, because there are times when you can tell it's not going on. And they were probably the original shots, yeah. right? But these replaced shots, it looks like he is holding his head very still, like he's been told not to move very much, because the CG relies on... Yeah, he looks like he's all CGI'd up. Like so he, yeah, so he keeps fake. his head very still and he's when he's talking, and it just looks weird. Like, it, I... I I was looking at his top lip a lot because I knew that this was happening. It wasn't the fact that the actual removal of the mustache looks all right. It's just the rest of the face looks weird. No, the removal of the mustache doesn't because there are times on his lip, it's like it's not really moving. It's really weird. Yeah, it's like um, like when there's like an after image. There's like two images. Like there's the... There's like his face, and then there's another face, and it seems like they're moving over each other. And here's the problem. We're discussing this for minutes upon minutes upon minutes because it overrides my brain's ability to get into the story when you're telling me a fantastical science fiction slash hero slash fake movie, right? It's all fake. It's a world that doesn't exist and characters that are outlandish and crazy. I have to be in that bubble constantly. Or I'm not. Now, the story wasn't strong enough. The visual effects weren't strong enough. The flaws, it's like they they don't just kind of trickle out. Like, in every movie has flaws that trickle out of little cracks and, you know, loopholes, as people like to say. This is like, they're gushing out at you 
like the water gushing into the stupid tunnel they were in for whatever amount of time when Aquaman decided to come in and acted like it was a big deal to hold back that little bit of water when yeah. apparently he can control the whole ocean. So I thought that was also kind of lame. Uh, yeah, and that, that's the point. Like, we were introduced to Aquaman. He's a cool character and everything. We don't, you know... He's a little too flippant for me. I thought he was a bit of an asshole. I actually like uh, the story of Aquaman, but we don't know it. Like, I mean, you can't assume we've all read the comics, and you can't also assume that we've seen other versions of Aquaman, because maybe we haven't. So, here's a man. Uh, Batman says, oh, there's a guy who comes out of the sea. That's pretty much our explanation for him. And it's like... That's good m- enough for me. No, to me it wasn't. It was like, okay, uh, Batman, I mean, now Aquaman's part of the thing. It's like, it's all, it's all very convenient to get this thing together. And then when the thing is together and, you know, like the Avengers, we watch it and we we like, we love the Avengers movies. And when they're all fighting together, it's like magic. Like they're all fighting together. We're watching a comic book to come to life here when they're all fighting. I'm thinking, wow, everybody looks like a rubber man. And this fight is quite boring. Like, you know, we're in a circular room. It's got some (laughs) height to it. People are jumping up and down in this room. And sometimes I can't even tell who's who. Like, it's just crazy. And uh, I'm actually kind of bored. And I love watching superheroes fight. So there's a lot of that for me. Now, moving on to good things. Because I think I've got everything there, which I didn't like. And you know what? Batman vs. Superman. People didn't like that movie, but it is a whole heap superior to this one. (laughs) You know, I think that one had a decent story. It it took its time to tell the story. And um, I understood what, you know, it was easy to follow and it didn't feel choppy. So good stuff in this movie. And my first thing for good stuff is Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. She Mm -hmm. like steals the show again. Yeah. So we just need to keep making Wonder Woman and nothing else. <laughs> she needs to like come come in and she goes like, all the blokes in this room, leave. I'm going to handle this, right? That's how we need to do DC movies from now on. <laughs> so, Don't ask me. You so know what she I'll is, say. She is great. Uh, then again, there's a bit at the beginning where she's like, you know, there's a bank robbery thing going on with the... It's, it looks so bad. I can't... She didn't look that bad in her own movie, you know? No. When she turns up on top of the bank and you're like, she's not stood on top of that bank. She stood in front of a green screen. It's quite clear. It looks really bad. Like, so, but she was the star of the thing for me. And she, obviously they're making a Wonder Woman 2. And I think that is their strong suit, Wonder Woman so far. So maybe they need to do Supergirl as well. Like a movie version of Supergirl. I don't know. Um, what do you have any strong points for the movie? Anything you loved? I just I like the overall vibe of any superhero stuff, like the big picture. It's just how they tell me the story that I usually complain about. This one I I was trying really hard to get in the like mode of a citizen person who's living in this world and how I'm counting on these people to save me, but I have no fucking clue. You're not telling me, and that's one of my biggest complaints is I, I try to get in it and they're like, yeah, if I was the people in that city and the Marvel thing happened, I'd be like, holy shit, and then the event has happened and you're all aware of it or whatever. I'm trying to think in this one, is that it's saving grace that I feel like if I were in that world, I would I would need to, I don't know, I would be afraid or I'd be hopeless or I'd be waiting for my hero to come back, you know, superhero, Superman. And the only person who gives me that not even Lois Lane, and not particularly that she wants him back, but his mom, I forget her name every time. Uh, Diane Lane. Diane Lane, yeah. The mom, adopted mother. She's not really his mother, but um, she's my favorite thing because she's accepted it, right? And she's moved on with their life. She's Her farm has been taken over by the bank and she's moving on and they don't use her up too much. And she symbolizes what the world really is doing without these superheroes. So what I find funny, so my favorite thing is how ridiculous it is, unfortunately, that the DC hero people, it seems like they're fighting a battle kind of over there where we're not 
really affected. It's that is always the case. Except when the cop guy says, "Oh, millions of dollars in damage, just like you." Ha ha ha. Like that's a, a running joke in the DC world that Batman causes a lot of damage, but I mean and nobody so, seems to care. And guess what happens? It gets repaired or the next time we go back to the building, there's a big hole in it. Yeah. But nobody seems to care. The statue of Superman has fallen down. Nobody's fixed it. No, it's just nobody's done anything to it. It's conveniently So uh, what in I pieces. get out of it is this in, this weird enjoyment of like if I were living in that world, I'd be like, did you did you hear about that guy who like did that thing and then Superman died or whatever? And you'd be like, I don't know, I'm busy, I gotta go to work. Okay, bye, see ya. That's that's the kind of world it feels like it would be. And I find that hilarious. So then everything that happens, I'm like, you all are fighting a comic book thing while the world is happening. And in Marvel, right or wrong, whether you agree or disagree, it feels like it's all sewed up together. And I think the seeds were sown with Iron Man because in Iron Man, the original first, you know, beginning, he's like right in the, you know, he's a shithead and he's then takes, is taken hostage and he's being held in a topical war and a topical subject and whatever. And then everything's, and then people started being involved and it felt more connected all, right away to the world and to people even though it's fantastic and everything. Right. Like Batman versus Superman, that the final battle takes place over there on this other island kind of thing. This movie conveniently takes, its final battle takes place elsewhere too, right? It's like, I don't like that. That feels like a video game to me. It's like... Um, yeah, so I'm saying the comic book is happening over there. Yeah. And everybody else is just ha- yeah. living over here. And then on the news, that it might say like, oh, well, uh, the superheroes were fighting in Russia today and or wherever they are. Where were they? Could you understand where they went? No. Exactly. Me neither. That's what I'm saying. It's it's like, it's nonsensical a little bit, because you're kind of like, uh, they went somewhere in Batman's plane. But I'm not kind of, I'm not actually convinced. Yeah. Where? Where is it? It, just, it looks, it's somewhere where there was some fallout, and people don't live there very much. <laughs> yeah. So how convenient is that? <laughs> and while I understand the trope of having the innocent civilians, as they like to call them, in danger at the place where the nuclear thing was, that just seemed... I wanted to know more about that family. Yeah, apparently. Right? Yeah. And I wanted one of them, I wanted the father or the brother or somebody to be like, yeah, screw this, and then fight back and whatever, but they didn't really utilize them either. It was just well, this weird tool to... Show the little competition at some point. Between, Let me tell you, know. you that Zack Snyder's version had a lot more footage of that family. And right. It told the story of the family slightly, whereas this kind of was all cut out, wasn't it? It felt like. I mean, I don't really need the story of them before this day, but to have them be a part of, like, they are citizens of the world, and to be a part of fighting this evil thing, whatever, yeah. would have been interesting, but instead they're just. Uh, nope, scared chillis and running and then they get saved and so you know I mean there's not there's no time for you to care about them it's like oh a family oh they're being saved but like, that's it really yeah like, there's nothing I mean the only thing you would care about is some human beings are being saved that's it you don't know who they are so that's another thing that feels choppy and weird um I also think Batman vs Superman while people really hated Batman vs Superman I actually quite kind of liked it but that actually had like a lot of emotional stuff in it too, you know the Martha thing, um, it Superman dying. You know, it actually felt like it tugged at your strings a bit. There was emotion. There was no emotion in this one. No, nothing. Like not even there was a Amazon gets killed on the battlefield in that big battle. Did you care? Did you really know who she was? Oh, because they killed a whole bunch of other ones. That's at what the same I mean. But the, one they were tra- <laughs> the one they were trying to focus on for you to go. Oh no, one of. Them. I was like, okay, she's that Bond one. I don't know who she is, really. So it didn't really matter. So there was no emotion. Like, I didn't ever once feel sad for anybody. When Superman came back, did you feel like a, oh, yes, no. Superman? Because I'm I'm not represented as a citizen of this world. I am being represented at not at all. I am a comic book reader watching this movie. Yeah. Right? And so, I don't know. I've never read a lot of comics. Hardly any at all. So, I don't know how people of the world are represented or if they get lots of pains or lots of storylines. or No, they don't. Right. <laughs> so, that's what this is. So, me, I'm just watching comic book heroes battle it out with each other completely unrelated to the rest of the universe. 
how it connects to any other planets or galaxies or how it relates to any other dimensions or galaxies or planets um, in any way other than this guy's going to kill the world. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, oh, no, save my world. Like like a, like one of the women from the silent era with the big black eyeliner and her hands up over her face on the, you know, railroad tracks. Like, ah, ah, save me, save me. Like, that's what it, but I'm not even that because no. I'm not even, I'm not, in it i'm not in that world so. but again going back to oops that was my phone falling again going back to man of steel and um batman versus superman they tried to address the real world like toll that superheroes take on real people in those two movies yeah and they even had like superman going to court and that whole thing about him wrecking the city and like should we do we even want him here i liked all that that but that was all thrown away in this movie yeah like that there is none of that now we've just gone from that which was a more thoughtful version of like how superheroes operate to this, which is not a thoughtful version. It is just a comic book again. So we lost all the thoughtfulness, which, you know, it needs to come back, I think, because it needs to be more grounded. And I know DC are trying to differentiate themselves from Marvel, and Marvel are going more wacky as they go on, which is fine too. But DC have always made, like, pin these movies as serious. Yet... You don't know where to take this movie. It, it's neither serious nor funny. So. It's non committal. So, moving on to the cast here, uh, Ben Affleck returns as Batman. And can I say about Ben Affleck in this movie? He is very boring. <laughs> like, he is uninterested to me. I know he's supposed to be grizzled and, like, kind of annoyed and, like, Batman's dead, uh, Superman's dead and he's sad. But I just felt like he didn't. He was just real, like, one note, nothing to him. <laughs> His charisma wasn't there. There was nothing. Like it was, he's, I could say he's pretty bulky now. Like he's bulked up muscly. So he does look like Batman when he's fighting in the suit. But as far as the performance, it's not really what he can do. It, it's, he can do better, right? Agreed. It's pretty, it's so flat. And, and, I'm, and I'm assuming that that was the idea. I'm flat because my friend Superman, who is my friend actually, who I was fighting with in the last movie, but... I'm actually his friend is dead, so I'm sad. I don't think that's it. But really, I'm try I'm pulling together this group of people, and but I've got no enthusiasm. It's just real. Henry Cavill plays Superman again. Superman doesn't have much enthusiasm either, right? Uh, well, he did just come back from being dead. He did. <sighs> And we don't address that much, except no. he's not like zombie Superman. He's not like evil Superman. He's not like dark Superman. He's not missing something. We don't even get a little hint at the end of a last scene or anything where he kind of like looks to the side like, hmm, yeah. maybe, I, maybe I don't care about this world the way I did before. Nothing. Well, that, that would have been like, oh, a little and perk of interest. But it's another problem with this movie. There's no, like, you know, development of anything really. So <laughs> is Superman. He's back. He'll fight for us. The end, right? No <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's no hint that he's going to like there's, flip out. I mean, no. he does it. He does a little bit, but he's like waking up. So this, that's first thing in the morning after being dead. Yeah. You throw your friends around a little bit, try to blow them up or try to crash them into the cement. And then you, your, who, your favorite person walks in and calms you down. Like yeah. we have that. Blah, blah, blah. And talking of the, his favorite person, Amy Adams returns as Lois Lane. Um, I actually really like Amy Adams. She's given very little to do again in this Correct. movie. Correct. She's really on the sidelines and not really... I like the scenes that she's in. I feel like there are probably more scenes with her in that we haven't seen. But um, she adds at least a bit of, like, like when I was talking about the heartstrings thing, <laughs> like somebody to ground Superman. She Definitely. Adds that. And Diane Lane as a as mother. His fake mother. And she was all right. She's always fine to me. I like her. Yeah. Uh, and then the star of this piece, Gal Gadot, is a Wonder Woman. Um, she's Wonder Woman. She is Wonder Woman. You know? Linda Carter is also Wonder Woman. But for our generation now, I can't think of Gal Gadot as any... She's Wonder Woman. <laughs> she's not Fast and the Furious person, whatever she was in that. <laughs> she is Wonder Woman. Uh, I think she plays it really well. I think she's... You know? She's it's like the role for her. Ezra Miller plays the Flash, like I say. Um, I like the Flash character, but I was kind of irritated by this Flash character. 
he was the he was the only joker in the movie. So any every time he said something, it was always a joke. He was never really serious. Did you? Yeah. Like I mean, I didn't mind him. Did they not but really didn't seem the to piss fit. out of you with his stupid jokes? Um. Strangely, no. That would be uncommon as well. But no, I'm. I liked him. You know, the actor. Yeah. So I don't know. I was I wasn't as annoyed as I was by say that horrible character in that other movie, and I always forget which one it is. But I remember it being horrible. Um, would have been Three Musketeers. Oh yeah, that's like the worst possible sidekick, stupid character ever. That was James Corden, I believe, wasn't it? It was. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, super horrible. It was like that stereotype. So kinda. that this guy did not have that effect on me. I so I was all right. And the the effect of the flash running about and stuff, it, it just looked like he was stood in front of a green screen pretending oh, to Oh, there's run. so much green screen in this movie. It, yeah. I just got to where I was like, whatever. I could probably find people on YouTube who may make movies, you know, shorts and whatnot, who it looks... It blew my mind better. a little bit, though, that it's such a high-budget movie and they didn't make it look great. Like, did they think it looked great? Because... <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Always. it's quite clear that it a lot of it doesn't look great. A lot of it doesn't look right at all, and it's a shame. It really is. Uh, Jason Momoa plays Aquaman, and you were not a fan of Aquaman, is that right? Not really. I mean, he's you know he's got the rocking song, and he's drinking, and he's like a dig it, which I kind of laughed at, but super boring. You feel like he I mean, needs he didn't his own movie? do much. What did he do? He flew around, not in the water, by the way. A little bit in the water, like a two-minute sequence. Yeah. Everything else was him flying in the air. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's not like. Can, are they saving it for his own movie? Or are they? What is the deal? Because I think he's up next for his own movie. Actually, he, he'll be the next DC movie. But yeah. And he's got mommy issues. Obviously, that's kind of the problem. So it's kind of boring, but. Every superhero has to have issues with something. Yeah. I liked him. I think he looks the part. He, you know, he's a... Actor-wise, is fine, but the character just didn't do anything for him. Aquaman me. looks really dumb in the in the comics. It doesn't look anything like this, this cool big guy. Aquaman in the comics is like a... It's weird. Like, it's, it's not cool at all. But this guy's actually a cool version of Aquaman. I like how, I like how he looks. I like how he's, his attitude is kind of... What you would expect, though, from this cool kind of, you know, I'm cool kind of guy. Hmm. A little much for me. Because he's... Border- see, that's more irritating than The Flash was. Well, I do want to see Aquaman's story. So I'm looking forward to seeing his movie. Hopefully they don't ruin it. <laughs> Ray Fisher plays Cyborg. What do you think of Ray Fisher? I like him. I did like Cyborg. I like the character of Cyborg. Mm-hmm. I just... I like Ray Fisher... But again, he's a lot of CG is involved in making Cyborg, and it looks kind of crap sometimes. Now, see, I bought him a lot more than I did a lot of the stuff, so... Yeah. Yeah, well... And I like his... You know, his story is pretty... Also, I don't... Awful. Yeah, it is, and but again, it's rushed, isn't it? Like, they're like, here's his story. Yeah, but <laughs> I understand why. I don't yeah. need five fully blown stories, or it would be about 20 hours long, which I wouldn't normally complain about, but... Um, yeah, I, that was fine with me. And then finally, Jeremy Irons as Alfred. What did you call Alfred in this movie? <laughs> like the most hip butler, um, dressed in clothes that are like a uh, newsboy from 1901. I mean, this is this weird trying fucking too hard to make Alfred look not like Alfred. Yeah, they're like, you know what? Really Al- boring. Everybody thinks of Alfred as a butler in the, you know, butler outfit. So, so he's got like riding slash cargo slash military pants that are <laughs> high up, that are kind of pocket full. And then he's got like a shirt that, and then that coat that reminds me of the, you know, boys on the street corner with their little cap. Extra, extra, read all about it. And then he's just got, I don't know. It just was wrong. I, lo- I really do like Jeremy Irons as Alfred, though. Uh, but yeah, the costume is yeah. wrong. The costume's wrong, but I think he actually plays Alfred pretty good, you know? But nobody will play it as good as Michael Caine. <laughs> Directed by Zack Snyder. Mentioned him earlier. I, I really like Zack Snyder, and a lot of people think he is, like, the worst. He's ruined DC He's the worst. and all that, you know? 
I've always liked him since 300, which was the first movie I saw by him. Uh, and I love Watchmen. I think it is one of the best superhero movies. It is very, very different to any other superhero movie. And, you know, it's just like, a, to me, I just love that movie. I love Sucker Punch. I'm in the minority. <laughs> and Man of Steel. Uh, here's another thing about this movie. Hans Zimmer made the Man of Steel, you know, music. The theme for Man of Steel. So whenever Superman turns up in a DC movie, the Man of Steel music wells up and it always makes me feel awesome. I love it. I just love it. It makes you feel like, oh, here comes Superman. (laughs) And that was one of my favorite things about the movie Man of Steel. That music is just always there and it's awesome. And they used it in Batman vs. Superman. But now... Because Hans Zimmer has retired from uh, superhero movies, in his own words. I'm not doing superhero movies anymore. And they've got Danny Elfman to do the score. They can't use Hans Zimmer's Man of Steel theme anymore. So the big moment when Superman turns wakes up, the Man of Steel theme would have worked perfectly. And then they don't use it because they can't. How annoying is that? That is annoying. So I, That's probably why I didn't have that feeling. Yeah, it does give you a feeling that you know Superman is around when that music wells up and it's gone. And now Danny Elfman's made a a bit of a Superman thing that doesn't mean Superman to me. So that's another thing where I felt, oh, here's another disjointed business decision. Oh, Hans Zimmer's not with us anymore, so we can't use that piece of music. It's just, eh. So you don't get that, uh, that big, here he is, it's Superman. Would that be better? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like actually singing hey the lyrics. everybody it's superman oh superman back. turns to the camera and starts singing that yeah yeah that maybe. sounds great yeah so there is that too uh zack snyder i you know this movie that thing happened i don't really want to talk about what really happened yeah to zack, something really it's personal horrible. happens it's snyder. the worst i think i don't know if it's the very worst but it sounds like the worst yeah it's horrible so, and it's so horrible he's they Stopped him filming the movie. He left to go and spend time with his family. And they brought in the other guy. It's quite clear that this movie, it feels like that. It feels like a lot of hands in a pot. And it feels like different ideas going on. Even this movie has two end scenes. You know, those like stingers after the credit kind of things. There's one, which was done by Joss Whedon. The first one. It's just like this light-hearted, like... Superman and Flash are having a race and it's silly and then there's another end of credit sequence that is really serious and sets up the next movie and they don't feel like they were made by the same person they feel it feels weird it's like funny serious you know it's another yeah. thing that felt patchy to me like patched together but Zack Snyder I you know I can't wait to see what you do next but this movie it definitely has the feel of like it's been tampered with. It's not his vision, you know? It feels like it's his vision at the beginning, don't you agree? The beginning of the movie yeah. feels very Zack Snyder. The end doesn't. When, this, yeah. when the fighting starts, it really it didn't to me. So extras on this Blu-ray, um, and there are a few. You have um, Heart of Justice, which is discovering the heart and soul of the iconic Trinity. Technology of the Justice League. You can see all the technology. The new heroes. You can meet the two new members. There's a suit up, which uh, is an in-depth thing on the different costumes. And there's some couple of deleted scenes. The deleted scenes and the advertiser is not seen in theaters are two superhero, two Superman scenes that were cut out. And <laughs> they, they amounted to nothing, right? Nothing. One was Superman walking. In 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 the in the uh, Kryptonian ship, and the other one was what him talking to his mum, Alfred. Oh, talking to Alfred. That's it. I'm really short, and there's not they don't add anything really. So yeah, there are extras, and they're probably about a couple of hours worth of stuff altogether. But because of the Zack Snyder thing and the different directors, there is no commentary either. So you're not going to find out the secrets behind the scenes here. So uh, in conclusion. What did you think? I had fun, but I thought it was kind of crappy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's my... I saw fun. I still like the idea of it all. Um, 
Wonder Woman. Um, yeah, the Wonder inclusion Woman. of Wonder Woman made it worth it for me. Um, but there again, it's my least favorite of all of the DC films. Suicide Squad is way better than this. At least there was some fun to be had there, wasn't there? I mean, it really, Harley Quinn in that one kind of stole the show. The Joker didn't really, did he? But mm. there's not a lot to take away from this movie. He's very forgettable, Steppenwolf. I almost forgot his name again. And it's because there's no there's no power in him as a character. He is a video game baddie. He looks like he's straight out of a video game, and so he's not real. Yeah. And also his method of entry and exit, it's just so like boom, there it is, boom, there it goes, boom, there it is, boom, yeah. there he's been beamed up and down. It's, it's very like, convenient when when we need silly. a fight. Here yeah. He is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he goes again. Yep. So we can all heal up for a minute. So oh. I wasn't. Yeah. He didn't do much for me. Yeah, he didn't do much for me. Um, yes, we brought together the Justice League. We now have a Justice League, and we also set up. At the end, maybe that there'll be more members of a Justice League. But it wasn't the best way to set them up. I would have rather just seen, like... The Steppenwolf was kind of the... It didn't do anything for me. It's also not something I really know. Like, I, I'm not f totally familiar with that character. So, uh, in conclusion, if you're a DC uh, person... If you like these DC movies, obviously you'll watch this, right? Because you want to know what happens next with after Batman vs. Superman Wonder Woman. But... Presumably. But, for me, as a big fan of Zack Snyder and all this uh, DC movies, it's the, definitely my least favourite. But there again, I still watch it. So, but yeah... As you can tell, uh, we spent 46 minutes kind of picking it apart. I don't <laughs> think we said a ton of good stuff about it. So, But again, it's not... Is it? I mean, I would rather watch Thor Ragnarok again than this. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, Thor Ragnarok was really well made. I wouldn't really want to watch either one of them again, so I'm not really into that, no. So, uh, yeah, um, in conclusion, we um, it's a DC movie with your Justice League superheroes and a really bad buddy. If you like that kind of thing, <laughs> maybe it's for you. So thank you to Warner for the Blu-ray. Next week, we have a review of the indie. We're going looking at an indie movie next week, and it is Star Wars The Last Jedi. That is kind of a small little... I heard it was made on a shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, we saw that movie in theaters and talked about it a little bit um, at Christmas time. But I'm looking forward to seeing it again because I don't feel like I absorbed it fully in one sitting. I never do. You know? So, need to see it again. So, we'll see that next I understand week. that. The Last Jedi from Star Wars next week. So, movie recommendations. A I am movie that probably somebody else picked apart. Like, we just picked apart this one. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. So, movie recommendations. Uh, I am going with Man of Steel for that awesome music and that welling up feeling that you're like, oh my god, Superman is here. It feels awesome. You don't get that in this movie, but you will if you watch Man of Steel. <laughs> and my favorite Marvel movie of all the Marvel movies, I was thinking, is it Guardians of the Galaxy? And then I thought, no, it actually isn't. My favorite Marvel movie is Captain America The Winter Soldier. It is awesome with Robert Redford. Um, it's got a very different feeling to the other Marvel movies. It feels like a, like a spy thriller. And I really appreciate that. I would like to see more of that kind of thing. You like Winter Soldier, right? Yeah. Again, that battle where they're just two guys on the street, it's kind of like... Yeah. What? What? So, yeah, Winter Soldier and Man of Steel. And yours are? Recommendations are unusual, unconventional today. Number one, and I was just trying to think of a moment in a movie where you're just like, oh, God, like that, right? And there's a lot of them. But what came to my mind wasn't a movie. It was a TV show. Season 3, Episode 3, The Survivors. This is Star Trek The Next Generation, in which, I don't know the name of the alien guy, he's an old man and an old woman live on a planet all alone, they find them, they're kind of fucking with everybody, somehow mentally, some kind of field and, you know, whatever, protruding and it's messing with Dana's head and whatnot. And when he says that because of this one particular race and a war and that ended up killing his wife, he killed them all. 
And then P- John Luke Picard says something I think about, like, well, it was war. And he goes, no, you don't understand. I killed them all across the entire galaxy and universe. Every trace of that race. I, just with one thought, he could, like, eliminate them all. And you're just like, oh. And now he's spent all of his energy and time just having his wife kind of back to life, sort of. She's not like a zombie, but she's not really there. So that episode. It sounds awesome, doesn't it? It'd be a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> now that is powerful. Because he could get rid of the Kryptonians just like that. And my other one is also unconventional because it's just a story that's in my head. It might be in someone else's head because nothing's truly original. However, it's a story that I, of a, it looks like a movie to me. A movie I would like to see. I don't think we've ever seen, but I can't tell you what it is, because then you'll go write it and make it, and you know, so I need to just write it down. Nice. So I'm recommending the story in my head um, that you don't know anything about. There could possibly be a movie called that, that people... It's not, about, it's not about a story in my head. It is the story <laughs> that's in my head. That, Correct. Um, so make up your own story. All right, so um, games and a scully stuff. I have been uh, playing uh, with my nephew a little bit here. Was a... Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins has a new mode that's been patched in there. And it's called Tourist Mode. And what they do is they remove all the combat from Assassin's Creed Origins and they turn it into a big history lesson about um, Egypt. And our nephew is very interested in history, right? Yeah, you can he, say so. And he knows a lot about Egyptian... Um, well, he knows a lot about Roman well, and he's Egyptian. in third year university for... Classical studies. So, so history. he did, uh, he, he played it, um, and yeah, they, they take all the combat out. You're basically like going... You, <gasps> Just thought of something. You know what? Having played those games with you all these years, yeah, that could have had something to do with his actual... He really digs... I mean, he speaks Latin. He's learned... He's been studying Latin since he was in sixth, seventh grade, and now he's studying Greek and ancient and Roman Greek philosophy and heritage and language and all that kind of stuff and then moving on to other classical studies he and always history. loved um, assassin's creed because it actually has real history in it and he always liked reading all the history parts you know yeah so That's what they've added now is a history kind of mode where you're not fighting anybody you're just walking around and when you get to certain spots it'll go well there's the pyramids and it'll give you like a voiceover about like this is when they were built this is who built them and it'll show you like um pictures from the time and there's all kinds of things in video games aren't all bad no uh, (laughs) even though it's called assassin's creed (laughs) well what's interesting about it is um you don't have to buy you can buy this mode separately for uh, twenty dollars it's uh you can buy it without the game, just this touristy mode. And if you want to learn about Egyptian history in this awesome rendered version of Egypt, because it looks amazing and you can wander around. And then when you go inside a temple, it, it tells you this temple was used for, and there's a voiceover. In fact, there's many different voiceovers. So it's like you're watching a documentary about Egypt, but you're actually walking around Egypt. Um, it'd be amazing in VR if you think about it. Mm-hmm. but. This is, uh, yeah, it's part of Assassin's Creed Origins. It's free if you already own it, or you can buy it separately. And the other game, which is not out yet, it's out next Friday, it's called A Way Out, and it's a prison escape slash heist game that you play with a friend. And EA are publishing it, and they've been talking about it for like a year and a half. And it's finally coming out next week. And you have to play with a friend. It's a split-screen game. One of you plays one guy, one plays the other guy, and you help each other escape this escape a prison and there's a whole big story to it it looks really cool it's called a way out it's on origin uh and it's out from ea next week i'll talk about that next week so what is for dinner this evening tonight we're gonna have a bit i think of rice and some corn chicken nugget thingies not nuggets it's not chicken because we're vegetarian this it's, is why you're asking me it's chicken supper. not spelled properly it's mushroom protein and it's made into little bits and pieces that when you cook it in the skillet, it's just like, well, to us now, because we haven't eaten any chicken for 10 years. So, and trust me, I ate a lot of chicken by the time I was 40. I probably ate more chickens than most people. So I do recall what it was like, but this is better to me. And so it'll be the that and some vegetables and some rice, because I don't want to go to the store. 
and I don't want to go anywhere. And if anyone wants to deliver supper to me, that'll be fine. But they're not gonna, so. What is your advice? And then we will get off. My advice is, it's not really advice, it's an observation, that um, you're never alone, like in your, what you're going through or what you've experienced. And at the risk of sounding really horrible and harsh, the, the terrible thing that's happened in your life to your body or to someone that you care about, a loss or an illness or whatever, it isn't unique or special because you will find that you are not alone as a human in all of human history to have suffered this loss. Now, I don't know every single special circumstance, so there may be something so, I don't know, I just can't imagine anything that hasn't happened already before, which is really terrible because really horrible things happen, right? But you're still not alone. True. Um, then again, you're always alone because, like, no one is in your head. No one knows every thought you have from the time you're a baby. No one knows every experience. No one knows every word that people have thrown at you in life, at the store or at work or terrible spouses behind closed doors with terrible girlfriends slash boyfriends slash significant others. No one is there for the moments when you're actually dealing with a terrible parent, a terrible child, an ill person. No one's there to hear everything and, and, you're the only sponge in the story, right? You're the only thing soaking up every single thing that's happened to you. So in that, you are alone. Because no one is ever going to be the same combination as you. Not the precise, exact combination. But that's like zooming into yourself really, really, really tight. But yeah, zoom out a little bit. And it doesn't take very long to realize. You're not battling something on your own. Like, you're not... And also the people who feel sorry for themselves because something bad has happened and like nobody understands. Everybody understands. Most people understand. Right? You're going to find somebody who gets it. They may not have had that experience. But they've had pain in another way. And you can't compete with someone's pain and say, yeah, but mine's worse. So, therefore, you know, you know nothing. <laughs> because my pain is terrible. And you, I'm alone. You're not alone. And I'm not sappy like you're not alone like there's a spirit around you. I don't believe in any of that shit. No offense to anyone, but I don't. You're just not a singular entity having experienced things that no one else can empathize with, sympathize with. Even if you never hear from that people, those people, just think of it. And remind yourself, because you're not alone in your suffering, someone else has suffered differently from you, you know, well, not definitely worse or, or less because, you know, we want to compare, but I just mean different from you. They might have experienced the exact same experience, the thing, but their suffering is going to be different from you. That doesn't make you alone or mean that they don't get it. True. So you're not alone and you're always alone. That's All right. Mess with your head. So if you <laughs> want some company, go to acequally.com. <laughs> It will keep you company because there were lots of podcasts there for you to listen to. You can also catch us on Twitter and Facebook. Catch this podcast on the Google Play Store, the iTunes Music Store. You can say to your Amazon device, say your trigger word, and then say, listen to After the Show Movie Podcast on TuneIn, and it will play the latest episode. You can also catch us on YouTube. The channel is ascully.com. That's ascully.com spelled out, A-S-C-U-L-L-Y. D-O-T-C-O-M. And you can catch... Go to ascoli.com slash subscribe. And all those subscribe options are there. You can even listen on the page. You can email feedback to me at ascoli at ascoli.com. I feel hey. like I'm saying ascoli.com. Hey, your friend. Do you see? He just posted on Facebook. Who? Your friend just said. She said yes. He's engaged. I won't say his name. Oh. So you can also... But he's a lot fuller than a lot of other people. Nice. <laughs> uh, so congratulations to that bloke. <laughs> <laughs> does he even listen anymore? Probably not. Yeah, he does actually listen. <gasps> well, then congratulations. Probably not. What are you talking about? He loves listening to this show. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I want to say uh, all those things. Stay classy, DC. You need to be a bit more classy than this movie. Um, you need to step up a little bit. And you need to make, I don't know, make a better movie. Thank you. 
And I'm going to say think for yourself or someone will do it for you.